slightly provincial perhaps, but it became the fashion. And, and uh, George Formby in uh, Zip Goes a Million was the rage of London. What extraordinary things we'll do. But Formby's success was cut short by a severe heart attack, which forced him into semi-retirement at home in Blackpool. For the next few years, he did panto, Commonwealth tours, and celebrity appearances. Ah, yes, it's a delicate job judging a bathing beauty contest, especially when it's the grand final staged at Morecambe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Harry, if the boys will help me. Oh, sure. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll By the late 50s, he was feeling fit enough to try and update his act. And we'll prove that it's in the same tempo as the modern rock and roll. Let's do it, yes. And the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> George Formby's last TV appearance was in 1960, by which time Beryl was very ill with leukaemia. She had to watch from her bed in Beraldine, their home near Blackpool. I mean, what do we do? We don't do anything. We don't become stars. You people make us stars. We wouldn't be any good without you. And any of our present stars today, if they ever believe anything different, they're crazy. I shall always be grateful to the public for what they've done for me. The day after the show, a journalist phoned Beryl Dean, expecting to speak to George or to Beryl. Instead, uh, what I thought was a child's voice answered, a, a little voice, and it's, hello. I said, and I thought it was somebody joking. And I said, who is that? May I speak to Mrs. Formby? And this voice said, I am Mrs. Formby. And I said, what's the matter? She said, you won't keep me long, love, will you? I'm very, very ill. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Formby. I said, uh, is Mr. Formby there? She said, no. I, I said, do you know where he, where he is? She said, I don't know and I don't care. Meryl had turned to drink to cope with her illness, and she and George were drifting apart. When she died, two weeks later on Christmas Day 1960, George was away doing pantomime. I think he really was lost when she went. Absolutely lost. He didn't know what to do. The press had a field day when Formby announced his engagement to Pat Housen, a young schoolteacher, less than two months after Beryl's death. Well, it's just one of those things. Probably a lot of people think it's a bit quick, but uh, I'll be perfectly honest. I, uh, I've got to have somebody to look after me. I mean, with what I've got, you've got something on your plate, you know. <laughs> so have you, you don't know it. <laughs> so I've got to take well, it's things taking quiet. ten years off him. <laughs> uh, I've got to take things very really quietly at the moment. Yeah. I think it was like a couple of kids the first two days, you know. I don't know. Neither, neither knew which way to look or talk. But uh, if we'd have kept it quiet and gone on secretly, it wouldn't have been nice, no. This was obviously, to me, a man in a, a lost in the wilderness. He was just lost. And I suppose he ran to any direction. And she was happened to be there. But I... I, I I'm very glad indeed that he never married her. George Formby died just three weeks after announcing his engagement, and he was buried beside his father in Warrington. The undertaker of the funeral was Eddie Latter, who'd written many of his songs. His family was stunned when they learned he'd left nearly everything to Pat Housen. I don't think he really wanted to do that. He never gave me the impression that he didn't care enough about us to take care of us in that way. It, it's pretty certain that, 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 uh, that Beryl Dean uh, had the dimensions of, of Fort Knox and that there was quite a lot of cash kicking about. And uh, I had it on good authority that a number of people made a beeline for the house uh, within hours of George dying. There was talk of a suitcase uh, under his bed with £60,000 in it in cash. That suitcase was never found. Because the will was contested, the contents of Beraldine had to be auctioned off. It was extremely depressing. People milling about, sifting through his stuff, and it really was an invasion of their privacy. 
people were walking through the house, they were picking up George's underpants and saying, oh, look, George's underpants, George's pyjamas. And it was so sad because it was almost like the Marie Celeste. Everything was there as they'd left it, but the two main players were gone. Over 30 years later, his memory still lives on at the Blackpool meetings of the George Formby Society. You can sometimes even spot the occasional ex beetle at these meetings. Well, fingers winded. George Wally. Windy cleaning. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now I go cleaning windows to earn an honest bob. For a nosy parker, it's an interesting job. Now it's a job that just suits me. You in the cleaner you would be. If you can see what I can see. Honeymooning couples too. You should see them bill and coo. You'd be surprised at things they do. When I'm cleaning windows. That's the end of the show, and I do hope you've enjoyed it, because I have, you know, they say confession's good for the soul, don't they? <laughs> and I've told you a lot of things that nobody's ever heard before. So now I'd just like to say three little words. Good night, good luck, and God bless.